What if lions were introduced into North America? What if you stepped outside and spotted a lion strolling across the American plains? Could the king of the jungle make a home in our backyard? It sounds like a scene from a fantasy, but it's a question worth exploring. Lions prowling the Great Plains or Canadian prairies? Would they fit right in or cause chaos? Today, we'll journey through this intriguing scenario. Meet the African Lion Let's start by meeting the African Lion, the star of our scenario. Lions have long been symbols of courage and strength, earning the nickname King of the Jungle. These iconic big cats have powerful bodies. In fact, only the tiger is larger in the cat family. A lion's roar is truly impressive. It can be heard up to five miles, eight kilometers away, a thundering announcement that the king is near. Male lions sport majestic manes of long hair around their heads, while females, lionesses, lack manes but are just as fierce. One of the most interesting things about lions is that they're social cats. Unlike solitary hunters such as tigers or mountain lions, African lions live in family groups called prides. A pride is basically a lion family, usually made up of a few adult males, a larger number of females and their cubs. Sometimes as many as 30 or more lions together. Inside the pride, each member has roles. Female lions are the primary hunters and work as a team to bring down prey. They're excellent cooperators, chasing down zebras, antelopes, wildebeest, and other large animals of the African savanna. Many of these prey animals are faster than a single lion, so teamwork is the lion's secret weapon. While the females do most of the hunting, the male lions guard the pride's territory. Males will roar loudly to warn rivals to stay away and will fight to defend their group if needed. The North American Scene Now let's switch continents and look at North America. If we ever introduced lions here, what sort of habitat would they find? North America is huge and diverse. There are dense forests, arid deserts, snowy mountains, and wide open plains. Lions, being adaptable, can live in a range of habitats, except for extremely dense jungles or the harshest deserts. They thrive best in grasslands, savannas, scrublands, and open woodlands, places where they can use speed and teamwork to hunt. So, which North American landscapes are a bit like the African savanna? The most obvious match is the Great Plains. Imagine the vast prairies that stretch through the central United States and Canada. These plains were once home to millions of grazing animals, somewhat like an African savanna of the past. Instead of zebras and wildebeest, North America's prairies had herbs of bison, deer, and pronghorn. The open terrain of the plains would suit a lion's style. Lots of room to run, and not too many trees to block the view. What about Canada? In the far north, Canada is mostly boreal forest and tundra. That's probably too cold and wooded for African lions. Lions don't like deep snow or thick forest. They aren't built like, say, Siberian tigers, who prowl chilly forests. However, the southern parts of Canada have prairies that extend from the US Great Plains. An African lion might find a Canadian winter quite a shock. It's possible that over time lions could adapt, but surviving in the wild, cold, would be a big challenge. The American Southwest, like parts of Arizona, New Mexico, or Texas, offers another potential habitat. These areas have desert scrub and semi-arid grasslands. African lions do live in some very dry regions. In the Southwest, Lions might find prey like pronghorn, deer, or feral pigs, and even cattle on ranch lands. But water is scarcer there, and prey isn't as plentiful or densely gathered as on the Great Plains. A pride might have to roam over huge areas to find enough food. They'd also be sharing the land with hardy predators like coyotes, bobcats, 
and mountain lions, which, despite the name, are a different species, the solitary cougar. We'll talk about those native predators soon. In the eastern US, the habitat is mostly forests and urban areas now, not ideal for lions. Historically, there were prairies and open woodlands in parts of the east, but today a lion roaming, say, Ohio or Georgia, would likely be slinking through farms and suburbs. Not a good idea. So, in a realistic sense, the best North American habitats for lions would be the large, sparsely populated, open landscapes, the kind found in parts of the West and certain parts of Canada. Some scientists have even mapped out where such large carnivores could potentially live with minimal human conflict. Native predators of these regions include the gray wolf, the grizzly bear, and the cougar, which still survives in the West and has started to slowly recolonize parts of the central and eastern US. There are also smaller predators like coyotes everywhere. None of these are quite like an African lion pride, though. Wolves are pack hunters, but much smaller than lions. A wolf weighs maybe 100 pounds, while a male lion can be 400 plus pounds. Cougars are solitary ambush hunters. Bears are omnivores mostly doing their own thing. In essence, North America today lacks a giant social cat at the top of the food chain. But it didn't always lack one, as we'll see next. A look back. Believe it or not, lions in North America aren't a completely new idea, because lions actually lived here long ago. During the last ice age, lions roamed across North America from Canada down to Mexico. These were not the exact same lions we know from Africa, but close relatives. Scientists call them the American lion, Panthera atrox. They probably evolved from ancient cave lions that crossed over from Asia when a land bridge connected Siberia to Alaska eons ago. The American lion was a fierce predator, and even bigger than today's African lions. American lion fossils have been found all over, as far north as Alberta in Canada, and as far south as Chiapas in southern Mexico. So they had a huge range, one of the largest of any mammal at the time. They thrived here for thousands of years. Fast forward to today, a group of conservationists has actually proposed something quite radical, introducing lions into parts of North America to restore lost ecological balance. They argue that when we humans wiped out the big beasts 10,000 or even 100 years ago, we left big gaps in the ecosystem. If lions come back, what could happen? All right, it's time for the main event. What if we really did introduce African lions into North America today? Let's imagine a scenario. Say a large fenced wildlife reserve is created somewhere in the Great Plains. A North American Serengeti of sorts. And a pride of lions is released to roam free inside. What would they do and what effects would they have on the environment? First off, the lions would probably feel right at home hunting North America's abundant prey. They'd quickly recognize animals like deer, elk, or bison as food. A pride of lions could likely take down an adult elk or even a young bison. Those are similar in size to the wildebeest and buffalo that lions hunt in Africa. We might see a positive ecological effect in terms of controlling those herbivore populations. In many parts of the US, deer populations are very high because natural predators are few. Lions could help keep deer and elk numbers in check, which in turn might allow vegetation like young trees and shrubs to regenerate. However, not everything would be rosy. Introducing a new big predator can shake things up in unpredictable ways. For one, the lions would compete with North America's existing predators. What happens when an apex African predator meets a native apex predator? If African lions moved into cougar territory, the cougars would likely be in trouble. A pride of lions could easily drive off or even kill a puma if they encountered one, similar to how lions in Africa steal kills from leopards or hyenas. 
Over time, African lions might displace cougars from the area, causing the native cougar population to decline. Lions could also clash with wolves. Wolves usually avoid animals as large as lions, but there could be fights over carcasses or territory. In Africa, lions frequently scuffle with hyenas. In North America, the analog would be wolves or coyotes. We might see lions killing wolves to cut down competition. This could reduce wolf numbers locally. On the flip side, wolves and cougars might avoid the lion-inhabited reserve entirely, losing habitat. And what about bears? In places like Yellowstone, grizzly bears sometimes drive wolves off a kill. With lions, it's hard to predict. A full-grown grizzly is a fearsome opponent, much heavier than a lion, but lions in a pride might intimidate a bear, or vice versa depending on the situation. They might mostly keep out of each other's way. But any occasional confrontations between a lion and a grizzly could be dangerous for both. Smaller predators like coyotes or foxes would likely get the short end of the stick. Lions could easily kill them or steal their food. So the predator hierarchy would be reshuffled. The African lion would probably sit at the top of the food chain, with other carnivores either adapting to its presence or retreating. Now what about the lions themselves? Would they thrive? North America may have plenty of prey in some areas, but it also has challenges. Climate is a big one. African lions in the wild don't experience snow. If introduced in a northern prairie, they might suffer in winter unless they find shelter and perhaps grow thicker fur over generations. In a southern or southwestern release, cold might be less an issue, but extreme heat and water scarcity could be. Finding enough territory is another challenge. Lions roam over large areas. In North America, human development might fragment suitable areas. So any introduction would likely have to be in a very large protected area to give them space and keep them away from cities or farms. Yet the idea remains very controversial. Some ecologists argue that you cannot simply rewind the clock 10,000 years. The environment in the Great Plains and other areas has changed. The plants have changed. The current animals have been living without lions for millennia, and humans are everywhere now. They worry that introducing African lions might do more harm than good. So, what if lions were introduced into North America? The answer is a mix of wonder and caution. On one hand, we can imagine the roar of lions once again echoing across prairies where they haven't been heard for thousands of years. Ecologically, they could help restore balance by keeping herds of herbivores in check, potentially leading to richer biodiversity and healthier habitats. It could be an amazing sight. North America with wild lions like a throwback to the Pleistocene epoch where our continent teemed with giant beasts. It might even help save lions from extinction by giving them new safe havens, as some scientists suggest. On the other hand, it's a complex and risky endeavor. There would be significant challenges in ensuring these lions survive the climate, don't harm the existing ecosystem in unforeseen ways, and stay away from people and livestock. The idea of a U.S. ecological history park with free-roaming lions and elephants has been floated by researchers as a bold vision. But others counter that our priority should be protecting the wildlife that is native to those areas now, and that introducing lions might create more problems than it solves. As one group of scientists noted, you can't truly recreate the ancient past, and a modern African lion is not the same as the extinct American lion. The environment has moved on.